Good afternoon, guys, and welcome back. As you can see, I picked up a bunch of corn from the local grocery store. It was on sale at Weiss for, I think it was $2 for six ears. So I picked up this whole crate for about $12 total, which is a fantastic deal. It's comparative to what my mom was getting at the local Amish market, um, although hers is probably a little better quality. I wasn't able to grow corn this year, so we're just gonna make do with the grocery store corn. The toughest part of canning corn is usually this shucking business and getting rid of all of the little hairs and stuff and basically prepping it. After that, the actual canning process is really easy. I put it right up there with green beans basically because it has my preferred method of canning, which is the ability to raw pack your corn kernels. Raw packing is exactly what it sounds like. You can put your vegetables in raw, you pour boiling water into your jars, and then you process from there. It's different from hot packing where you warm all of the vegetables, usually by dropping them into boiling water and letting them boil for a brief period of time, then packing them, then processing them. So it just saves a little bit of time as far as having multiple pots going at the same time. I'm basically just gonna be able to take my corn kernels once I've got them off the cob, put them straight in my jars, just put boiling water on them and put them into the canner. It did successfully grow some corn this year outside on the patio, but not nearly enough to actually stock up on, and I am completely out. So I went ahead and decided that I was gonna bite the bullet and buy what I needed. Hopefully next year I plan to do a larger portion of corn in the actual garden, so hopefully I will get enough last year to, or next year to restock the shelves. So to start with, we're just removing all of the outer leaves and trying to get rid of all of the silks that are clinging to the corn cobs. I'm tidying them up. I'll give them a quick wash before I show you guys a little trick that I used last year that really helped when it came to cutting off the kernels. The trick I wanna show you guys is this bowl inside of a bowl trick. It really does help to contain all of our corn kernels, keeps them from going everywhere when you are slicing them off of the cob itself. And all it is is a larger bowl on the outside and then like a soup bowl or a serving bowl that you would use for cereal or something like that, turned upside down and placed in the middle of the larger bowl. I kind of laughed when I was in the grocery store because like I said, they're on sale. And when I got there after work, the selection was fairly picked over. <laughs> there wasn't a lot of good corn cobs left. So I happened to ask the produce man if he had any in the back. And he said he did and he brought me out this entire crate and he just told me, oh, you just pick the ones you want and I will uh, put the rest out on the floor. And I laughed at him and said, I'll take the whole thing, thank you. <laughs> and he was like, really? I was like, yes. Um, he didn't really ask what it was for. He just kind of looked at me odd, but that's okay. Um, it's just a funny little story to think about that most people don't need an entire crate of corn, which is entirely true. But for our scanners, it is a much more prevalent thing to buy in bulk like this. So with this raw pack method, you don't want to condense your kernels too much, i.e. don't try to shove as much as you can in there. I am just lightly putting them in there until they get to a one inch headspace. You don't want to be cutting too deep. I usually try to go about three kernels width um, just to make sure I am not taking too much of the cob side of the kernels. You really just want that top two thirds of the kernel going into your canning jars. So it looks like 18 corn cobs, maybe 18, 19, is the perfect amount to make 10 pint jars worth which makes a full canner load. 
At this point, you have a decision to make to add salt or not add salt. The book recommends, I believe, half teaspoon per pint of salt, but I rarely put any salt in my things. I prefer to salt them at the end when I'm actually cooking them. I haven't really noticed any differences in flavor or texture or coloring or anything like that when it comes to adding the salt. I just have noticed that some of the things that I have salted have been ended up being too salty for me. I've got fresh water here that is just coming to the boil. We're going to be filling up these jars to the one inch of headspace, doing a little deep bubbling and topping them up if necessary, and then they're going to go into the pressure canner, which is also warming up on the other side of the stove here. For those new to canning, debubbling is exactly what it sounds like. It is the process of removing any air bubbles in your jars. Um, this helps keep them shelf stable for longer. Just make sure that they process correctly. Usually I just use a wooden toothpick that I keep here on the counter and you just stick it up and down along the sides and release any air bubbles. This usually means that your water line drops down a little bit and if necessary you can top up with a little more of the liquid that you are using. Last thing we're going to do is wipe our rims with some white vinegar on a clean towel. Center our lids, add our rim, tighten to fingertip tight, and this is ready to go in the canner. This is going to process for 55 minutes at 11 pounds of pressure, and then you will have shelf stable corn to put on the pantry shelves. I have a whole pile of corn cobs over here, and I have a bunch more coming. And I have seen several home study channels do something called corn cob syrup. I am intrigued by this idea, but I am not 100% sure that it is something we would enjoy. So a lot of my corn cobs will probably end up in the compost bin or in our trash. And I am just going to do a small little recipe of it just to see if it is something that we would enjoy. Look for that video sometime later this week. Thanks so much for watching guys. If you like content like this, please let me know by liking and subscribing so I can make more. And I will see you guys next time.